I'm carrying on a tradition here that's been in our family for something like three generations or more before me. Uh, my father was a sheep man. Um, this part of Wheatlow is very suited to sheep farming. It has a hilly nature, so it, it was always the main enterprise. And uh, there's always been sheep since we were going to school. I can remember tending to sheep. I've been doing it during my time. And I'm in the process now of passing on to the third and the fourth generation, our grandchildren. That's basically, we have a very small flock. It wouldn't be a viable uh, flock if you were to try and make a living out of it, but uh, it's there to carry on the heritage of sheep farming on this farm. And our grandchildren, of which we have 10 now, and they have bought into it. And if there's any thing to be done, they are more than really up all hours of the morning ready to do it. Um, the, the breed of flock is, is the weekly chevet crossed with a suffolk and if you notice the, the face gives away the, the breed because they usually come spotly faced in that with a cross. Um, we're almost to finishing on, on the lambing this year, they've lambed up quite quick, it's about two weeks and we've only got two left. Okay, um, well I suppose uh, the period we're after been through the last couple of weeks is the culmination of the, the breeding period for sheep and that would have started last October when, when the, the rams were introduced to the oas and um, they start uh, in October. When you let the ram out in October you expect lambs mid-March so that's what we've been over the last two weeks. For ease of management they're always housed, some people might lamb them out but we actually for ease of management and the prevent losses we put them indoors a few weeks before they start to lamb and let them out a few days afterwards. Um, we have a small flock, with, for that reason it's a very personal flock, you kind of know your individual sheep and you know the ones that had two last year maybe or didn't, lost one last year or whatever but anyhow um, for that reason you're kind of close to them. We're excited. Very much this year, it's a kind of a special year for us because Evan has asked us to be part of the zero uh, kilometer in, in uh, Brook Lodge, and uh, for that reason, we're going to identify a few um, special ones later on. Uh, once the breeding season and the work of grass, we'll actually uh, identify a few that'll be so. It, it's a small flock, uh, small many, flock, 40, 40, 40 years, yeah. And uh, when we were up last week and um, uh, previous, uh, you were able to tell us uh, who were the good mothers and the new mothers, and you, you uh, yes, you know the flock. Oh, we know the flock. We do yes. indeed. We know the flock, and we we, we keep a, a record of them. Years ago, there was no uh, identification in sheep other than put your name with your letter S Lou. That was the only identification. There's a lot of paperwork now with sheep, and uh, they're all registered with the Department of Agriculture, and they have the yellow tag to tell you so. But it's a help you too. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're able to remember the ones that mm. done well for you last year, and that one that finished lambs first, and so on. But you prefer uh, to introduce a ram rather than a vet with AI. Yes. Um, uh, and that really suits us. Why do you still carry on? This is very traditional, isn't it? It's traditional, and, and we do stick to the traditional methods. Mm. Um, nature service. Mm. Um, some years ago, there used to be there used to be different ways of compacting the lemon uh, period, and the, the done things called sponging and so on mm. to get it all you know, it's coming mm. within a few days. We never went that road. We just nurture mm. and. Uh, I think actually when you, you give the always a flush before they actually go to the ram, give them two or three weeks of the best grass you have, it tightens the, the lamb mm. period up. Mm. So that's, that's the moment mm. we have for it, yeah. And this is the knowledge that we want from you for this project? This is for, for I'm yeah. trying to, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only the caretaker at the moment, so I'm really only passing on. We're only the students. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm only the yeah, caretaker, I'm passing on to the next, the next yes. generation, and yeah. I've done that because my father did the same thing. Mm. He showed us. Mm. And told us all the pizza I, as well. I, of course, with a yeah. flock so small, yeah. there's no profit in it. No. No farmer in Ireland makes a profit. No, of course, they never <laughs> yeah. admit to it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but as well as that, yeah. uh, like it wouldn't be by any stretch of imagination, it's not a viable, it's a hobby. It's a pet. Uh, yeah. A pet flock. A pet flock, that's what it is. Now, we're really excited at the moment because Evan next door has um, a project or a a uh, thing that he's been talking about for some time but he's doing it this year and it's called uh, Zero Kilometre 
whereby uh, everything on the table for one meal for 150 people at the end of this year will be grown or produced within one kilometre of the table. And we are really excited that we are going to be part of that and I was just glad that we had sheep when he asked me to do it. So we're looking forward to that and uh, we'll be identifying four or five of the ideal sheep for that night and uh, we'll be giving them that little bit extra. So we look forward to that.